Christmas blessings. As a parish family, we joyfully welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica for the birthday of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our clergy, lay pastoral team, and parishioners lovingly wish you, your families, and friends the peace and joy of our joyful Christmas season. If you are visiting or a newcomer, kindly fill out our special welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket to continue Christ's message and ministry throughout our Cathedral Basilica. Our joyful celebration of Christmas calls us to rejoice in the good news of our Savior's birth that brings the gift of peace to all peoples. Today's second collection is for our Christmas flowers. Kindly be generous in making our Cathedral Basilica beautiful for this entire Christmas season. As we prepare for today's celebration, I invite you to introduce yourself to the people who are seated around you, and I especially urge you to greet and share your name with those you've never met. You have to, you have to walk slow because all those kids have to come after you. Please stand and join us in singing our opening hymn, number 357.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Good afternoon and a blessed Christmas to all of you. Merry Christmas. As we gather together to celebrate the great feast of our redemption in the birth of Jesus, the unseen God taking on flesh in all humility and coming to live in our situations of life, let us call to mind God's mercy and pray for forgiveness for our sins and that we might be open more to God's life and love. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Christmas hope. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mystery of his light on earth may delight in the gladness of his light in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you, as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them on the pole on their shoulder and the rod of their taskmaker you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak that rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful. From David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires, and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age. As we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. So all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem because he was one of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor 
rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, again, once more time, a blessed and Merry Christmas to all of you. Are you there? <laughs> you haven't begun yet, huh? <laughs> okay, maybe after this mass, after a cocktail. <laughs> uh -huh. As we gather together, it's good to have all of our family together as we uh, have family and friends gather uh, for uh, Christmas. And we welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica. And uh, we invite all those who are visiting with us uh, from other places and other parishes, other cities and other communities, and even other countries, just to stand for a few seconds, we might give you a loving uh, Christmas welcome. All of our uh, visitors, just stand for a few seconds. It's great to have you here. Wonderful to have you. At the end of the Mass, we'll have a special blessing for all those who are visiting with us and for, for all those who will be traveling during the coming days that you might travel in safety. Yeah. You know, Christmas is a time when we uh, gather together as families and as our friends and uh, uh, we like the, the glitter and the, uh, the glimmer of the lights and uh, uh, the Christmas songs and the festivities. Yeah. But we are human beings. <laughs> so what happens is that things are not perfect when we get together uh, in our families and or with our friends. I was reminded of that when I was uh, watching uh, a, a little video that my friend, who my, my best priest friend, who, who is in uh, Philadelphia, uh, sent to me. And uh, it, was, uh, it was in his parish, and it uh, took place uh, last year, and it was about the children's nativity scene. And the little baby that was in the, uh, in the crib was the, the little doll of one of the shepherds. And that shepherd did not like that Mary was cuddling that doll. So in the middle of the manger scene for that children's mass, there was a big rigmarole. <laughs> In fact, uh, uh, I wish I could show it to you because Mary pulled one leg of Jesus and uh, the shepherd was pulling the other leg of Jesus. It was uh, quite a tussle. <laughs> I'm sure that you've experienced in your own lives uh, the, uh, the Christmas scene where uh, a, a child has fainted or forgot their lines or I uh, even um, got sick, and all of a sudden there was a big Christmas gift there <laughs> for everybody to clean up. So as we come to celebrate Christmas, it's a, it's, it's a time where we have to be reminded, as our first reading reminds us, a people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. That's the first, those are the first words from scripture today, uh, from the prophet Isaiah. Uh, and we're told that those who live in darkness, that the, 
we are called to have hope. You know, when we take a look at uh, today's gospel and we see that Mary gives birth to Jesus, we have to go and listen to what was said at the beginning of the gospel. Now, I'll, I'll, I'll do some alliteration, uh, not alliteration, but I'll, I'll do some ad lib, okay? okay? Mary was fine. They got over the trauma of Jesus uh, going to be born to her. Her parents finally accepted it, and they were all in Nazareth, and Joseph was there, and he decided, you know, well, I'll, I'll marry her. And everything was uh, kind of like calm down after the storm, because there was a big storm uh, from the Annunciation. And then the emperor, who's a foreigner, Caesar Augustus, what he does is he decides to uh, start counting the people. And so he gives an order uh, uh, to uh, Quinarius, who's, uh, who's the governor of Syria and also of what now is the Holy Land. And what happens is that all of a sudden, everybody has to travel back to where their lineage comes from. Mary and Joseph were not happy campers at all. <laughs> at all. Making a move to Bethlehem. Because they were of the, of the line of David. And so what Luke gives to us in today's gospel he, he tells us, you know, that they make this trek that they don't want to make. Their lives are disrupted, but they make this journey to Bethlehem, and when they get there, there's no place for them. Everything is kind of dark and gloomy, and it's a simple story. And it's a story that brings us to the fact that in our human poverty, in our human poverty, when things are difficult, that there's still hope for light. And it's those shepherds uh, who are the poor ones in, in and they're really kind of smelly <laughs> folks out there <laughs> in the fields because they're with the sheep and they move from place to place, like migrants actually. And they're not having a good time either because of just their lifestyle. Economically, they're pretty much down at the bottom of the pit. And all of a sudden, as Isaiah will prophesize, the people who walk in darkness see a great light. And they are afraid. And there's a statement that's made, and it's an important statement to all of us. Wherever we may be, in our family and with our friends, with our health, with our marriages, with our children. Mm -hmm. They are told, be not afraid. They are told that God, who is light of light, has been born in Bethlehem. And that the people who walk in darkness, you know what? Ultimately, we see a great light. We see a great light. The places of darkness and gloom of a city, which had no room for Jesus, a light dawns. And those who are uh, migrating from place to place and have no 
no lasting home. And those who are unexpectedly, unexpectedly asked to move from one place and journey to another place, that what happens is that they are given hope. You know, faith calls us, every single one of us, in this moment of, of Christmas. In this moment of Christmas, uh, to set our, our minds and our hearts on hope. Hope has to be our remedy. And when we hear that Jesus was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in the manger, I was telling Flint, uh, just this afternoon, uh, just earlier this afternoon, that there's a little, I had a little revelation. You know, that it was Jesus who was wrapped in swaddling clothes and put into a cave, a manger. And it was also Jesus who was wrapped in burial cloths and he was laid in a tomb. <laughs> And that what happens is that there is light and there is life and there is hope. And that's the message of Christmas. That's what we're called to share in today. And faith proclaims that tonight we can see God in our human dilemmas because God who is invisible comes to take on our human natures with all of its joys, but remember, with all of its sorrows. And God is there to give us light and hope. You see, the agenda, I believe, and I've been meditating upon this the past couple of days, the agenda of Christmas is really the agenda of hope. The hope for us human beings uh, that even though we walk in darkness, there is a great light for us. And even though we have at times to be in a land of gloom, that what happens is that there is a great gift of glory for us. And so the night breaks with the star of Bethlehem and the angels say to us, as they said to the shepherds, be not afraid. A light has shone upon you and the glory of God will come around you. As we sing our creed this evening, uh, there is a time that uh, we come to when Jesus is born. And uh, the cantor and the music will stop. And then we will all just kneel down for a few seconds. And that we'll thank God at that point, that almighty, omnipotent God, who is all powerful, uh, that he is stooped and come and jumped out of heaven and taken his humble place in our midst with all of our limitations so that as he has come down from heaven, we might go up to heaven.
I believe in one God, I believe in one Lord, I believe in one Spirit. Let's continue our prayer to the Lord. Child of Mary, hear our prayer. Child, Child of, of Mary, Mary, hear our prayer. For the Christmas joy of our universal church. For peace in our world, especially in the Middle East, the Holy Land, and on the Korean Peninsula for the unity of all Christians and the salvation of all God's people. Oh, creation, raise your voices, child of Mary, our prayer. For the members of our Catholic family who have been away from the sacraments that they may come closer to Christ during this Christmas season for the sick, suffering, poor, powerless, elderly, and unemployed, for our troops, marriages, and families experiencing difficulties. Oh, creation, raise your voices, child of For the defense of religious liberty and the reverence of all human life. <clears throat> for a fuller embrace of biblical stewardship. For our catechumens and candidates and the safety of all who journey during this sacred season of Christmas.
for vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, religious life, and service of the church, for the eternal life of our beloved dead and the comfort of all who grieve, and for the special intentions of our hearts. And we ask this of you, Father, in the name of your Son, who is the Son also of Mary, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit of your love forever and ever.
Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the offerings and oblations of this day's feast be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may be found in the likeness of Christ, in whom our nature is united to you, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we are caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hopes and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sin, which keeps us from being friends, and hate, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your loving people. God our Father, now we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us. When he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
And so, loving Lord, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayers. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May the Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the Church with Francis our Pope, Curtis our Bishop, Pierre Baptista, the, the Patriarch Archbishop of Jerusalem and Bethlehem, Joseph our brother, and all your people. Remember those who have died, bring them home to be with you forever. Gather us all together in your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, the mother of God and our mother, with her all good and holy husband, Joseph, the blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, the martyrs, St. John the baptizer, the precursor of the Lord, St. Anthony and all the saints. They're all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not, on our, look not on our sins, but look upon our faith, the faith of our church, and grant, graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come to my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in the state of grace come to the altar for Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts to pray for the peace, to pray for the unity and peace of all God's people.
Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, as we honor with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with 
fullness of faith, the hidden depths of this mystery, and to love them ever more and more through Christ our Lord. Please pray for the repose of the souls of Richard Guillory, Sandra Bergeron, and for the comfort of all who grieve. Bishop Gilly, Guillory, Monsignor Jerry, all our Cathedral Basilica clergy and pastoral team thank our parishioners for their many kindnesses decorating our beautiful Cathedral Basilica and ministering at our solemn Christmas season celebrations. God love you for your great generosity. In observance of Christmas, our Cathedral Basilica Chapel and office will reopen this Wednesday, December 27th. Please note that on Sunday, December 31st, we will not have the 12 noon Mass. Kindly see our bulletin for our complete Christmas season Mass schedule. Directly following Mass, you are urged to visit our beautiful manger scene in Our Lady's Chapel to pray for all your beloved living and deceased family members, and to donate and pray for the persecuted Catholics living in the Holy Land. Kindly tidy up your pew for our next Mass. Thank you. I invite all those who are visiting with us uh, and all those who will be traveling during the next uh, week to kindly stand and receive a special blessing all of our visitors and all those we travel. Let's extend our hands in blessing over our visitors and, and travelers. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you safety in your journey. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. Amen. Go ahead and pray for God's blessing. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this most holy night, drive far away from all of us the darkness and illumine our hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God, who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds, the poor ones, by the angels, fill our minds with the gladness he gives and makes us herald of his gospel. Amen. May God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realms, fill us with the light and gift of his peace and favor and make us all sharers with the church in heaven. And through the prayers of the Holy Mother of God, together with all the saints, especially our patron, Saint Anthony, may the Lord bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. All through Mass, when you heard the children crying, very good, that was right on cue, okay? That is the first time that the world ever heard God speak uh, through a human voice. Can we do it again? <laughs> Have a wonderful evening, and remember, the cry of a baby is 
the newness of life.